Morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? Per requests, we are doing part three of the top favorite ball python. <laughs> per request, we are doing the third part of the ball pythons video. If you missed part one and part two, I'll link them up here in this corner that you can click on. We try to put cards there every video, so you can click on and check them out and see what's good. Like the video real quick, comment down below, and let me know what you want to see next. I'm enjoying doing these sit down and show the snakes videos. I, I am having a lot of fun doing them, actually. I, I enjoy it a lot, so I'm glad that people are enjoying them with me because it's a lot of fun for me. This is actually going to be the first five snakes that I got as far as ball pythons go when I first moved back from Hawaii. I'm going to talk about why I got them and who they are and what they mean to me. <laughs> So this is Carl. Carl is a hypo pinstripe, and I wanted to name him Carl, but I was fought by the rest of my family that Carl was a ridiculous name. So he's Carl, just regular old Carl. First ball python, a boy, obviously wasn't thinking about breeding when I got him because anybody that knows anything about breeding ball pythons know that the females take a lot longer to come to sexual maturity than the males and therefore you want to get your females first and raise them up. He just happened to be the prettiest ball python that I saw and that's basically how these first five snakes that I'm going to show you came to be. Is They just looked really pretty, I liked them a lot and there they are. Carl, again, hypo pinstripe, I got him from the East Bay Vivarium which was the first place I got my very first snake when I was four years old. So it was kind of a nice return to the hobby of keeping snakes for me, to go back to that same place, my old stomping grounds, and and get Carl there. And look at how chill he is. Carl's chill. Carl came with me to Arizona for a part of a year at one point, and we lived out there, and now we're back here in California, where we belong. Look at the size of his spur right there. Carl is a boy, and the size of the spurs is not a definitive way to tell the gender of an animal. However, he does have a fairly long spur sticking out right there, doesn't he? This is Maya. Maya is Hawaiian for banana, which is how she got her name. And she's a coral glow, technically. <laughs> And I remember when I got this snake, I was asking, I told the guy, I really want a banana. And she was a female. I didn't care if it was male or female when I got her, you know, but I just wanted to, a banana. And the guy was like, well, it's a coral glow. And I was like, well, is that the same? And he's like, I think so. <laughs> and I was like, all right. At the time, she was $1,000. Second time, second snake, $1,000. Obviously, I was getting in heavy right from the start. Female coral glow, Maya. Absolutely beautiful, has produced several clutches for us here at this point at Triple B. And she's she's a beauty. She's a, she's a kid's favorite. She's my wife's favorite. She is she's a good snake. Calm, easy, gentle. Her and Carl both lived in separate fish tanks when I first got them because that's how we kept snakes when I was growing up. And then I, I soon learned better ways to keep them more successfully, which is what we do now. Got her from TJ at 29 Snakes. I dragged my best friend out to a small show in Tracy, California at a mall. And that's where I found her. I also found Brian Gundy vending at that same show. This, unfortunately, is snake number three. This was an albino ball python, a male that I got from East Bay Vivarium, who kind of struggled in the beginning and was just a struggle. He didn't eat well. And maybe that's why I don't like albino ball pythons now so much is because of the fact that it's probably my worst failure in keeping snakes. He had a stuck shed and I went to soak him for a little bit and then forgot that he was soaking. And so he stayed overnight in the soak tub in, inside of the other tub and was gone the next morning. So that was that's still, I don't like talking about it but I try to be open as possible with mistakes and successes. And that was it. That was the biggest mistake ever. 
I've never forgotten about a snake soaking ever again. Always set an alarm to make sure to go back and check on them if they're soaking. And that is un the unfortunate and sad tale of snake number three. And we're gonna end that part there. We're, we're done with that. Let's move on. Snakes number four. I got all four of these snakes at the exact same time. This was shortly after I learned about Freedom Breeder from Kevin McCurley's huge illustrated book on ball pythons. And I went to the facility there in Turlock, met them in person for the first time, and picked up all four of these snakes right there at the same time. We've got the Purple Passion, which is a Phantom Mojave. She's produced two clutches for us at this point. We've got Ty, the Leopard Spider. Oh, by the way, the Purple Passion's name is uh, Violet. Super creative, I know. And then here we've got Sophie, who's an Enchi Lesser Spider. And then we've got, of course, Mr. Bullwinkle, probably one of the most beautiful boys here at Triple B, the Super Pastel Lesser. And this is going to be the most challenging one because four adult ball pythons all ready to go. This is the moment when I decided that I wanted to breed snakes. And since I had just gotten my first Freedom Breeder rack, which now, of course, Freedom Breeder is the main and only sponsor of this channel. Super stoked on this whole relationship and how it's blossomed. And uh, this was the moment I decided I was gonna breed snakes, which brings me to snake number five. <laughs> In this whole three-part series of my favorite ball pythons, we have not had a single snake in shed, which is incredible. Of course, until now, snake number five, which was also one of the snakes in the first part of this video, the queen, our clown pied, the one that was really like, like I said, the last four is when I decided to start breeding snakes. And then this was the project that was like, this is the project I wanna get into. Here she is, deep in shed, and I'll show some footage of, from the first video of how she looks there versus how she looks now in shed and how incredibly different a snake can look when they are in shed like this. And she's not even, you know what? She's still gonna go a little deeper into shed than this, but just look at the difference. It's absolutely mind blowing. Just like what's in, okay, I'm not gonna say it. I'll let you just take your imagination wild as to what I was going to say next. <laughs> um, that's it guys and that's the end of our series of ball pythons from here on out we're gonna do different stuff I don't know what I don't know why I don't know when music Monday I think I'm bringing back music Monday hardcore every Monday even if it's just coming up with a quick little ditty if you watched the last one poopoo -poo 198 if you missed poopoo -poo 198 man you missed out on a good time I'll link it right here go ahead check it out but that's it for us today folks take care of yourselves take care of each other Happy Mother's Day tomorrow to all you wonderful mothers out there. I know I'll be seeing my mother and my grandmother. So I hope you guys are able to do something similar. If not, well, enjoy your day anyway. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I know I said it already. Aloha. Aloha.